and the well-being of the Armenian people. Good evening, and thank you so much to the Unified Young Armenians for once again bringing us together to remember the 1.5 million Armenian men, women, and children who were murdered in the first genocide of the last century. During the last session of Congress, we took up the Armenian Genocide Resolution, and for the first time in decades, the House passed that resolution with 405 yes votes. It was an overwhelming and bipartisan showing of support in the Congress for recognition. Likewise, in the Senate, that resolution passed on unanimous voice vote. Going into tomorrow, then, President Biden has behind him the near unanimous support of Congress to do something that a President of the United States hasn't done in decades, and that is to recognize the loss of a million and a half as what it was, a genocide. I have, for the last uh, several weeks and months, been using every opportunity to speak with the National Security Advisor of the United States and the Secretary of State and our USAID AID Director and our National Security Council members to urge the President to recognize the genocide. I circulated a letter among my colleagues which attracted the support of dozens and dozens of members, Democrats and Republicans, calling on the President to fulfill his promise to recognize the genocide. Now, you have been at this a lot longer than I have, and I've been at this for 25 years. We have seen presidents come, and we have seen presidents go. We have seen presidents promise to recognize the genocide as candidates and renege on that promise as presidents. And so we all go into tomorrow with a great deal of apprehension, anxiety, and anticipation. But I can tell you that I've never been more optimistic that the President of the United States will do the right thing. I've never been more optimistic that once again the United States will speak truth to power, will not cower in the face, in the face of Turkish threats and intimidation. And if President Biden does as we all hope and pray that he will, I want you to understand that the reason that he is doing this is because of all of you. Because of all of you. Because of you and millions of other Armenians around the country, around the world, who have never given up in the quest for truth and justice. You have never given up through all the vicissitudes, all the ups and downs, all of the disappointments. You have never given up. And if he does, as I hope and pray that he will, it will be because of you. But it will also be just the beginning. We must immediately turn our attention to the need to release the more than 200 POWs held by Azerbaijan. We must immediately turn our attention to strengthening the Minsk group to make sure that Azerbaijan and Turkey never again make war on the Armenian peoples. We must engage to make sure that the refugees driven from their homes at the point of a gun can once again return to their homes in Artsakh. And that the people of Artsakh have the right, as all people should, to self-determination. And with your efforts and your commitment, as you have demonstrated, to recognition with your efforts to bring about justice for the people of our side, we can ensure that they too will have a